Welcome back to the State and Local Sports. We're here with Mark Tennis of CalHighSports.com, the co-founder and editor. Yesterday, the MOK Showcase, one of the best girls basketball events of its kind in the country, I would say, finished up. Uh, my major takeaway, and partially just seeing them play against St. Mary's and a little bit against Clovis West, is, man, Centennial of Las Vegas can play. I mean, they hammered what was national number one. Clovis West of Fresno beat St. Mary's the day before. Uh, what were your major takeaways from that showcase and what you saw? Well, um, when Centennial started playing against St. Mary's on Saturday, uh, they were very fast, very quick, very athletic. And a lot of times when you see St. Mary's play, there's, there's, they're not playing anybody who's quicker than they are or more athletic. And this team was and is quicker and more athletic than they are. Um, that being said, St. Mary's still only lost by three points, and it came down to a couple of three-pointers. And then uh, yesterday with Centennial against Clovis West, it was just shocking how uh, the turnaround. I mean, we've, we've, we know it's hard for teams to beat another good team twice, but Clovis West had beaten Centennial 57-42 to earlier in the season at the Nike TOC in Arizona, and then this time it's 70-44. to I mean, that is an incredible turnaround. A lot of that had to do with the athleticism. Clovis West had a game where they're not really very deep, and all five of their players just had bad games at the same time. And um, it does show that the, the open division, I think, in California this year with Mitty, even St. Mary's, down to Carondelet and some other teams, uh, it's pretty wide open. The, wide, the, the open division is open this year. And boys basketball, two of, if not the two best teams in the country, or two of them are uh, Sierra Canyon of Chatsworth and Chino Hills, no Sierra Canyon. Just won a really impressive uh, showcase or tournament in Missouri. Who's who's your mind in your mind? Who's number one in the state, and are they the national number one and two at this point? Oh, I, I don't think they're national. I think national number one. You'd have to go with Nathan Hale out of uh, Seattle, Washington, which beat Sierra Canyon, and has a kid named Michael Porter Jr., who a lot of people thinks the best player in the country, and has been showing it many, many, several different times so far this season. And Nathan Hale is great because it's a public school in Seattle, just like Chino Hills last year. So that's kind of cool. Um, you know, as, as Centennial and Clovis West were getting finished last year, so was Sierra Canyon in their game yesterday on the boys' side um, in Springfield, Massachusetts. That game was on TV, so there were a lot of people tweeting about it. And Sierra Canyon was playing La Lumere Academy out of uh, – out of Indiana, which is the number one team in the country, and Sierra Canyon beat them. I think Sierra Canyon probably would have to be a number one team in California just based on the their big wins so far this year. I mean, they beat Memphis East earlier in the weekend. They also beat Finley Prep earlier in the weekend. Chino Hills hasn't played the same type of schedule. However, if you want to look at it from the standpoint of, of, of Chino Hills being the defending state champion, having a 53-game winning streak, I mean, there's nothing wrong with either team being number one. I mean, it's just a matter of what your criteria is. Uh, I think the criteria that Ronnie Flores, who does our rankings primarily, is looking at the, the strength of schedule, those national national wins. Uh, and, but if you're looking at it from the win streak, you can go with Chino Hills. But right now we have Sierra Canyon 1 and Chino Hills 2. Well, Loretta Kakala of Manteca High was named a McDonald's All-America in the West Girls basketball roster. She is the first from her city or school. She is the fourth honoree from our county, uh, which also includes Jackie Jamelos, Chelsea Gray, and Afuria Jim Rigby of St. Mary's. And amazingly, as you've written, as you've written before, she's only the seventh from the San Joaquin section. Um, you know, for her, she has had success in high school, but injury problems too. A lot of her AAU and recruiting profile has bolstered her as much as anything, both in her college attention and now as an All-American. Is that? It seems like that's just becoming more common. It's very common. It's it's also the same way in football for the uh, Under Armour All-American games and the uh, the U.S. Army All-America game. Um, it's very common where. Uh, these players are getting chosen for All-American honors based on what they do in the summer and not what they do for their high school. Now, that's not to take anything away from from um, from Loretta because she's a great player. But but at Manteca High School, the, you know, her and her team just haven't done that much to, to maybe be an All-American. Um, but, you know, she, she looks great. She's a great player and a great, a, a, a great young lady, and she deserves it. So it's just a different way of looking at it, and it's definitely the way All-America games are, are chosen much more now than, than before, where at least in the past people would look a little bit more on your high school stuff. But now it's pretty much uh, 
80 to 90 percent what they do out of high school and what they did in the summer and in, in club and recruiting and all these showcase events. Now, Southern California girls basketball storyline, um, a record broken this week. Could you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, we did have a record that broken. Uh, the state record for career scoring in girls was, was broken on Saturday night by Destiny Littleton from U.S. She's going to USC, but she goes to Bishops High School in La Jolla. Right now she averages about 50 points a game. Uh, she broke the record um, held by Sade Houston of San Diego High, who was actually there and watched it. So that was really cool to hear that. Um, after that happened, we went through and updated all of the state career records and state leaders and all the way down to everybody that scored 2,400 points and below. And there were a couple locals in there, Jackie Jamelos. And we also had to figure out Tiara Tucker, who, of course, uh, was at Brookside Christian for three years and then was at McNair for one year. And her total is actually quite high on the all-time list, too, and probably would have been higher if she hadn't left Brookside and stayed had stayed there. She might have been even higher. But um, that's another story. Uh, bottom line, it was a great record for Destiny Littleton. She's going to put it up uh, out of sight in the next, uh, next, few, next month or so. Um, you have to pretty much be a four-year standout and average about 30 to 35 points a game throughout your career to get the kind of totals that she's getting. Now, last year in the Super Bowl, we had some fun California high school ties, or even just uh, from Northern California, we had Shaq Thompson from Grant for the Panthers, we had T.J. Ward from De La Salle for, uh, for the Broncos, even Amini C. Latolu from West was uh, inactive for the Panthers last year, though he had even started some games earlier in the season. And this year, sure enough, we got... Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers still alive, and they're not only just California, but uh, Northern California guys. It's a Northern California. We've been waiting for this for a long time. Those of us that have Northern California prep sports people, a matchup with Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers in the Super Bowl, uh, rooted for it for the last few years. This year it's still alive. Of course, it, it's st- long, still a long shot that maybe both of them are going to win um, on Sunday, but it would be great if they did and then matched up. So we'd have Pleasant Valley of Chico representing Aaron Rodgers and Sarah of San Mateo representing Tom Brady, two of the greatest quarterbacks in the history of the game, both from Northern California. It would just be awesome. That's what I'm definitely rooting for, and hopefully it'll happen. And you mentioned uh, last week the Chiefs, Alex Smith, would have been another California representative had the Steelers not beaten them. Um, he's from Helix in San Diego, so lots of quarterbacks from this state. And who knows, might have Jake Browning or a couple other guys like that in a couple years. Brad Kaya's from California, the Miami quarterback, so could be more. Sam more Darnold more. from Sam San Clemente he looks really good coming up, too. He does. All right. Well, over on CaliSports.com, the Gold Club membership, State record books, insider content, uh, anything you could want, less than $2 a month, less than 20 bucks a year. And thanks for joining us, Mark. We appreciate it. Thank you. Great show.